Hi. Hi. Hello. I don't know. That was a little too emphatic. But hello there. How are you? Welcome back to the last Couple versus Cardboard unboxing for the Against the Shadow Cycle. The very last one. This is... What pack is this? Morgul. Ah, I just had it. Yeah. Why did I forget it? I don't know. It's Morgul Veil? Vale? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's the Morgul Veil. Vale, the last uh, pack in the cycle, which is exciting. It's also like a little bit sad. If you kind of count Heirs of Numenor, this cycle's been going like almost basically a full year. Wow. It was just kind of weird. It was basically like around this time last fall, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. We really, so. we really got to start making some <clears throat> progress on this cycle. Yeah, we do. We do. But we've been doing a lot of other ones. We've been doing fine. So, a um, couple of housekeeping things or news things that I just wanted to point out. If you have yet, if you, if you watch a lot of either our stuff uh, or Lord of the Rings stuff in general on the internet, one thing that you should be aware of is a new podcast, oh. which is out, called The Grey Company. Uh, G-R-E-Y company. Uh, it is a really fantastic, it's four guys who uh, in general are from kind of the uh, Lord of the Rings LCG community who kind of got together and they're all over the country, but they do an online podcast thing where they uh, all talk about stuff, stuff related to the cards, stuff related to the metagame, all of it. And uh, so it's really, really uh, it's been really, really cool. The first episode was really great, and I think it's going to be really good if you're into, if you're just getting started, or if you are have been around a while. So fun. really fun conversations. I highly encourage you to get uh, to get into that if you're not short too. So yeah, okay. uh, yeah, it's fun. So highly recommend that. Um, other than that, we're going to go right into it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go <laughs> again. <laughs> I think we're going to have to pay copyright for that. Why did you do that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like how you had that mortified look on your face. Like, oh my gosh, did I really? Is that true? Okay. Um, so who's up first? So first we got the Pelagir ship captain. Yeah. Uh, leadership. Uh, he's a Gondor trait. And he uh, has, he costs two resources. He's got one quest. One attack, zero defense, and two hit points. Um, and obviously he's an ally. And his response is, after Peller Gear ship captain enters play, move one resource from the resource pool of a hero you control to another hero's resource pool. Yeah. So, Glenn, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Okay, well, here's here are my thoughts. He's kind of an odd duck. So the first thing is he's two resources... And what he does is he kind of just shifts the resources from one person mm -hmm. to another. <clears throat> so he's kind of confusing in a lot of ways. Like he he's fine, but he doesn't have any defense. He's got one uh, willpower, which is great. And he's got one attack, which is great. The two hit points are kind of irrelevant, really, in some senses to me. But the thing that's really weird is it costs two to put into play. So I would say that uh, he's probably fine, you know, and if you were using him with that Noldor lore person who, who gives you a defense bonus, if you move or, or change mm, any resources, extreme, yeah. that, could be, that could be helpful. It could also work with, obviously, any of the other ones that give you resources. But I think the two resources thing is the thing that I dislike the most. Hmm. Um, he's, he's fine otherwise, but he's, just, he's two resources. So for his ability, right. it's hard. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, if you have, um, and this could be because the last time we played, I ended up with one of my heroes have this huge pile of resources. Totally. <coughs> and all I wanted was the other heroes to have those resources. Yeah. So I would have gladly paid two resources to put him in if I can move, a, like, a handful from, you know, my, my one sphere to another. Well, and it's not even a handful. It's one. It's one resource. So, right. it, so, I mean, it would be one I see. Thing. So it's basically like... I mean, it means that in some sense, three resources have to be in play. Well, yeah. Right. There have to be at least one here and then two somewhere else in order to put them into play. Yeah. 
I just, I just mean I like see. The, I see. No, I get what the you're math saying. of it is why it's not my favorite. I get what you're saying. I like it. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, he's gotten or traded, so he's so he's yeah. already. I mean, he's already plays with all well with all the other ones. Right, and I would say, I mean, it's not like you're. He's costing three resources. Obviously, he's not going to be the thing that you right. rely on to move resources. I just mean like there's Aaron Ryder who works a little bit better. Aaron Ryder is like, I think he's one resource. And you just exhaust him to move res one res any I think it's any number of resources, but it's move resources from one to yeah, another. Fair. So I just mean you're comparing him to those guys. Again, I like that he has attack and and yeah. uh, willpower, but he's just he's so far isn't he? Fair. Yes, comparatively to all the other things we've seen, Envoy of Pelagir, like all these, he just by comparison isn't my favorite. Got it. But I would still use him. I'm just he's just not my favorite. Fair. Yeah. What's you? next? Did you like him? I, mean, I think he's I just interesting. don't want to obliterate your opinion. I think he's interesting. Okay. Um, and like I said, like I'm coming from this perspective that I would have liked to be able to move yeah. resources over from one sphere to another. Right. And so I think he can be, he's an ally you're putting into play. So one, at, at minimum, you you're you know have a chump blocker. Right. And, and you get to move a resource over. Right. So I think that... Could work, and especially if you did some things that work with it, like you just mentioned. Right. Where you get a, like, you know, boon for moving resources or whatever. Right. But it's not like, he's not like the, this, like, amazing, like, game changer. I just think, I mean, if, I, I just keep thinking, like, compared to even, like, Squire the Citadel, who is a chump blocker who gives you a resource afterwards, like, yeah, I would still rather use. That's all I'm saying. It's not bad. No. I know. All right. We're going to fight about this. <laughs> no, we're not. Irreconcilable differences right here on video. <laughs> really terrible. Oh, there's video evidence. Uh, okay, next up. Visionary leadership. It's a unique uh, skill. Two resources leadership attached to a Gondor hero. While the hero has at least one resource in its resource pool, Gondor heroes get plus one. Uh, willpower. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's, I, I think it's basically, <clears throat> I mean, I, I love it. I, yeah, I just love it a lot. I think it's so great. Um, I think in one sense it makes Boromir, leadership Boromir, it basically makes him Dane, like Dane Iron Fist, mm -hmm. because he, he then has the willpower and attack ability, as long as he can keep one resource in his pool, you know, right. and leadership, that's not, that's not the hardest thing to do, especially after this whole cycle, because you have things like gaining strength and you always have steward of Gondor and, uh, right. horn of Gondor and all these other things, which put things into his resource pool. So I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, I love that. It's not just to heroes, it's to any Gondor yeah. traded character. So I mean, you yeah. could potentially have a yeah. ton of extra questing points in one round, depending on how many allies you have that have Argon traded. And would it work for your, your partner as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for so, sure. So, like... It's all Gondor what? characters. Yeah. No, it's so fantastic. Good. I mean, it really is, like... The one thing that I would say that I'm, I get leery about cards like this on is just having not played it, if it is going to start moving into that kind of... Are we overpowering then? It, I, I mean, I'm just... I, no, I don't know this one. Well, I just get nervous because with things like the Dwarven Synergy, I will say that there isn't a lot of things out there like there is for Dwarves, like there is for Gondor. Right. But at the same time, it just... I always get anxious about it because of how... But think about how hard Against the Shadow is. Yeah, but it isn't... I mean, with a lot of it, it's battle that you're doing, or battle or siege... So this, I mean, it's great. Oh, that's a good point. So I wouldn't, I don't know that I would use as much of it for a lot of the, those kinds of quests. I would use it a lot in some of the other, you know, all the ones right. that have basically been up to this cycle, but. Fair. Yeah. All right. So but, next. But I love it. I do love it. I love it. Okay. Go ahead. I love it more. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. So next is the uh, Spear of the Mark. Okay. Um, it is a tactics. Wait, what mark is that? I, it was, sorry, it wasn't, I didn't mean it as a trick question. 
<laughs> it was because you're getting to the trait in just a second. Keep going. I'm sorry. Spare the mark. Keep going. You tricked me. No, I didn't mean to. It's a one resource. Okay, so it's one resource tactics, and uh, it's traded as an item and a weapon. So attached to a Rohan, Rohan character, and it's restricted. Attached character gets one, plus one attack, plus two attack instead if, atta if attacking an enemy in the staging area. Oh, so it's the Ritter mark. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I wasn't, it wasn't like a trick question. You just tricking me. All right. What do you think? I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I want to play with it right now. I know. Seriously, it's so good. And yeah. with some of the other cards that we're going to show in just a second, too, it's even more fantastic. But uh, obviously, like someone like Dunhair, who can attack the staging area directly, it's fantastic. Uh, we'll talk more about it yeah. in a second. But obviously, Rohan traded, and that's so much fun. So great, and I love any time you get to attack things in the staging area. Yeah. So to get a like extra. But zone. but this doesn't give you the ability. No, to so to give you extra attack towards that is yeah. great. Yeah. Because you can you can have that be a characteristic of a deck. Yes. Be great. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the next one, the next one is <clears throat> uh, an event, also tactics, fourth. Uh, Eorlings? I don't know how you pronounce it. It's that old English, so it's like Eorlingas? Eorlingas? I don't know. But it's Eorlingas. Uh, Eorlingas. It's like the children of Eorel. I think that was the name of like the ancient Ro Rohan king was Eorel or something like that. So it's the, his lineage. It's very like, I've, I've heard people talk about the old English of this and how it's really fun, but I don't know any of that. <laughs> so you can you can go to, I don't know, Encyclopedia of Arda and look it all up. But uh, so tactics, events, two uh, resources. It is a combat action. Uh, each Rohan hero can be declared as an attacker against enemies in the staging area this phase. What do you think? I don't like it. Oh. <laughs> That was a joke. What do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Yeah. I think I love attacking enemies in the staging area. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I adore this card. I think it's like it's a lot like um, Hands Upon the Bow, uh, or the U Bow, or Dunhair's ability. But it's uh, all you have to be is Rohan and a hero. Yeah. So it's so great. So good. So good. Yeah, I think it. I think it meshes well with. Ironically, I think it meshes well with traps because uh, oh, I think that's yeah. really interesting. I, it doesn't feel very Rohani to like Trapping. mesh with traps. Yeah, but but at the same time, whatever. Uh, so I think it meshes well with things like traps. Uh, I you know everything that we've talked about so far. I think I think Spirit uh, Pippin can push people back into the staging area. I think that's his ability. So I I really enjoy this card. I think it's I yeah, think it's cool it's that great. we're seeing a lot of that. I, I obviously hope we don't get too much, but <clears throat> I I obviously love when we can attach attack things yeah. at the staging area. Though I will say, attacking things in the staging area can be really difficult because it's typically single arm combat, meaning it's one person against the person yeah. in the staging area. So that is obviously a little bit difficult, but but not with this card. Oh, tell me more. But no, oh, the card it? that you just read. What about it? You I mean, more than one hero can attach. Each Rohan hero can be. Oh. So you could have two Rohan. Oh, Rohan I missed heroes that. Attack one person. Oh in my the gosh, area. that's even that's way cooler than I thought it was. I know, right? Oh, it's cool, but now it's way cooler. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I love that. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Then I have no problem with it. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much, and it'll be cool because I've already spoiled. Um, we obviously will talk a little bit more about something that'll be when we get to the hero in just a second. But obviously they also spoiled the first hero in the voice of Isengard, who's going to be, close your ears if you don't want that spoiler, uh, Aomer. So he will be the, the, the hero in that one, which is going to be so fantastic. Like it'll be great to have, obviously you'll be able to do a full Rohan. I guess you probably could up to this point, but you could do a, a tactics Rohan thing. It'd be so much fun. So, oh my gosh. I love that card then. All right. All right. So the next card. Yeah. 
uh, is a spirit card. Okay. Our first spirit card in the uh, pack. Okay. So it's Steed of the Mark. Oh. Well, Ooh. Mark. That's uh, hard to say. Mark. Huh? Mark Jacobs. Mark Twain. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and he has a mount trait. And his thing is attached to a Gondor or Rohan hero. In response, after attached hero commits to a quest, spend one resource from attached hero's resource pool to ready attached hero. And he costs one to, yeah. to attach. Put into play. Yeah, what do you think? I like him. I, I think, I mean, anything that can ready a hero, I think, is super valuable. Yes. And especially, too, I think, because you're doing a lot of things... Um, that are battle or siege in this yeah. cycle, it's really helpful to be able to ready so that you can reuse whatever. If someone has a strong attack power, reuse that attack or whatever. Like, readying the character is going to be yeah, it's great no matter what. Especially with spirit. Because I think, obviously, spirit, uh, whenever you're doing a battle, uh, or, for, or a siege for that matter, can be... Uh, Spirit is is going to be undervalued in a situation like that. So if you are running a spirit deck, it's always fun to be able to have something like that where yeah. it's going to give you that kind of upper hand. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's great. Uh, so the next one we have also, I mean, obviously worth mentioning on this one, uh, Aon. I mean, Aon on this one, or even just the Rohan Rush deck. So running spirit, the all the spirit Rohan cards. Oh yeah, this works really well with those yeah. as well. So, yeah, nerdy things. I think Aowen was one of my first heroes to ever use. I think she was your first one. Yeah. I think spirit was the first spear you ever you ever worked with. Fun. Yeah, yeah. She's great. Okay. Uh, next one up is a spirit event. Uh, it is Lay of the Nimrodel. It's one resource song. Uh, action, use a spirit hero, or choose a spirit hero. Until the end of the phase, that hero gets plus one willpower for each resource in its pool. Right? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I think it could... It could, has a, a ton of potential, is what I think. Yes. So, I mean, if you think about spirit... Well, I just feel like feel like Against the Shadow is so attacking. Yes. That spirit doesn't get yeah. a ton of use. So this is, you know, a way, well, I guess if you're not questing. Now I have to rethink what I was going to say. No, that's fine. Well, one thought I had was, I mean, in addition to that, there is also that monosphere card. I think it's even called Against the Shadow, which if you are running something like a monosphere spirit deck, I think it lets you use your... <clears throat> spirit as your attack power. Someone comment below if uh, if I'm if I'm wrong. Actually, I'll probably look it up before you get a chance yeah. to. I'll just feel shame, but the camera won't be on. Uh, but I think that's what it's called, and I think it lets you basically use attack power yeah. as as that. So it, it obviously gives a boon to something like that. So I like this in the sense that I could then choose to use right. it almost like I might Gondorian Fire. Right. Without well, after paying for it, You just actually. have to have a, a deck where you kind of accumulate some resources for spirit. Yeah. Obviously, because otherwise it's... You're basically just paying one... You know, if you're only getting one in, then you're paying two resources to get one quest point in. Yeah, or if you're using any of the, the Gondor resource stuff. I mean, that is another option where if you're going something like Leadership mm -hmm, Spirit, mm -hmm. although obviously that combo of... Uh, the against the shadow card doesn't work as well, but for something mm -hmm. like if you're using a lot of the Gondor resource cards, that would be really helpful. So, uh, yeah, gaining strength and all—I mean, all of them basically. Yeah. Steward of Gondor, things like that. So, and if you can re re, uh, so if you can do something like Steward of Gondor, and then either Steed of the Mark or um, Unexpected Courage. Mm -hmm. You can then be back in the game as well, which is sure. is also fun. I yeah. think there's a re I think there's a window to do that. Yeah, because it's just an action, so it's whatever phase. So yeah. it is there is a window to do that. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I I I yes, I will say that it because I do like that it gives you and especially if you end up in that 
situation where you just have a bunch of resources that have accumulated. Right. Because that happens where you right. get five, six rounds in and you just don't have as much you're paying for from one particular sphere. Right. You've used up everything you need to. That is even the time where you probably would be looking for a card like that. Yeah. And then it would be awesome. Right. Right. With the sing-songy voice, too. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So next up, we got um, Arid Nimros Prospector. Yes. Who is a lore ally. He has two uh, resources. He's one... Uh, what is that actually called? I always say quest. Willpower. One willpower. Yeah. Zero attack, one defense, and uh, two hit points. So he's a dwarf. Yes. Response. After Arid Nimros Prospector enters play, discard the top three cards of your deck. Then choose and shuffle one card from your discard pile back into your deck. What do you think? Uh... So my gut reaction when I, I saw the spoilers online and so my gut reaction was I didn't even really look at him because I just saw a dwarf and was like, I'm I'm done with dwarf. Like that was my gut reaction. Poor dwarfs. I know. They they they'll be fine. I'll They I'll, have really great beards though. They're so great. I like, love the dwarves. His, I don't look actually at his have beard. I don't <laughs> I don't actually have a problem with the dwarves. I love them. I am just being prejudiced because uh because they just have gotten the spotlight for a long time. And it'll be fine. I'll be back. You love an underdog. It's, I mean, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. It's fine. No, I actually... I mean, I really do... And this one... So this is... So the other half of my statement was going to be that my initial reaction was, I don't... I'm not even going to pay attention because why mm -hmm. do I even care about another dwarf? But my now reaction was, after I after I picked up the pack this morning, I said... Oh my gosh, that ability is so awesome. Like it's it's this odd, like convoluted card draw situation. And one of the cards that we're going to show in a couple seconds too, I think it would re work really well with. But I think this card, um, basically getting, letting you discard the top three cards of your deck and then choose one of those, I think would be really awesome. But you're choosing it to put back into your deck. Oh. Into your hand. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on. Did I read that wrong? I totally read it wrong. Then choose and shuffle one card from your discard pile back into your deck. So maybe it works if if you have a card in your discard pile that oh, you yes. really want back. Yes. Um, like if you had Path of Need or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. It would be great to then, put Path of Need back Then you're back basically in. you're basically paying three random cards. I see. To put it back, because that, that's how I would, that's the only way I can think of Still love that. it. Still love it. I still think okay. it's great. Yeah, I mean. Because until I thought of it that way, I was like, why would you care, why would you reveal three cards just to put only one of them back? It's yeah. Like you're I'm, just discarding two. But then it makes more sense <coughs> if you have something you really want back in your hand. Right. Obviously, you could sack Gandalf in the process, so that would be wor that would be the worst. Right. You're right. You could ditch Gandalf. But at right. the same time, I think a lot of, some people would say worth it especially because in an average game you probably i mean if you play a long game you might get 15 rounds yeah. you know what i mean uh i mean in some bizarro world you might get like 18 rounds or something like that but i think an average game is somewhere around 12 so if you're doing an average of if you, that means you're drawing an average of 12 cards yeah i mean maybe a few more with lore but i think it ends up being one of those things where i would gladly sack yeah. Three cards yeah, no, to get some sense, back. Yeah. 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 So he's great in that sense then. Um, he, I think I would also chalk him up to one of those dwarves like the um, uh, Iron Hills Miner. Is it the Miner of the Iron Hills? Where yeah. they just have these in insanely unique abilities that you kind of just maybe throw one or two in just to see if you can get them to. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. What do we got next? Uh, Scroll of Isildur. So this is the similar, this is all the records that we've been seeing uh, in all the other ones, but it's for cost, it's a record, uh, attached to a lore hero, uh, reduce the cost of Scroll of Isildur by one for each hero you control with a printed lore resource icon. Discard Scroll of Isildur to, pay, to play any uh, lore event card in your discard pile as if it were your, in your hand, then place that event card on the bottom of your deck. Uh, great. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, it's, it's, 
It seems like it might be really, I mean, it could be really awesome with a Monosphere Lore deck. Yes. Right, because then it's only going to cost one. Yes. Right, because it's for each hero. Yeah, and I started thinking about the records today because I'm I'm attempting to maybe try and do a summative review of the meta of Against the Shadow. So I started thinking about the records today, and obviously I think one of the big things they give you is, in some sense, it's like having an additional card in your hand. Mm. Uh, I have to pay for it in some sense, but in Monosphere decks, where they're kind of, they can end up feeling a little bit one-trick pony-ish, uh, it can be a little bit harder to get some of those cards yeah. that you really need. I think Lore has the added benefit of a lot of card draw, right. so it's it's harder to... But at the same time, I do like the records. Yeah. Again, still Tactics is my my BFFCs. Yeah, you love fighting. Well, not only just fighting, I think Tactics was... I think it's the best one because they just have so many great events that I always wish I could get back. And because they're cheap. As yeah. opposed to... Yeah, anyways. Fair. Yeah, we talked about it in Blood of Gondor, but... Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. Okay, so... Um, last one before the hero. The hero is um a non-sphere i don't know what that's neutral called. yeah a neutral card yeah, non-sphere sure um it's zero resources it's called hidden cash and response after hidden cash is discarded from your deck add two resources to the resource pool of a hero you control action spend one resource to draw one card i just can't, i mean can i always have this in my hand right yeah like i mean it's literally the money card. Well, but it's so only sort of. Why? Right? What do you mean it's the money card? What like, do you mean when you say you that? You literally get money. But only sometimes. No, you add two resources to the resource pool of a hero you control. If? No. no. If it's discarded from your deck. Oh, yeah. So, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Maybe we're both reading... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my read of this is wrong. Like, after you play it, you get two resources. I don't know that that's what that's saying. I think what that's saying is if you're discarding from your deck. So, for example... If you use that last card that we Like had. the miner or the prospector. But you can di you discard things from your hand. But this is saying from your deck. Oh. Right. So it's totally bizarre. And actually, it, it changed the way that That's I even looked really at it, too. It changed the way I look at it, too. Because so, my initial thought was, I love... Okay, so, so point, like, obvious, easy part first, the second ability, the right. action, uh, card draw, neutral card draw card. Yeah. So... Fantastic. Yeah, like, that's great. Everybody in the whole universe is going to want this card. They'll probably put all three copies in every deck they ever construct ever. Right. Hey guys, it's Glenn from the future. Uh, Cheryl, you look hot. Glenn, you're about to say something really stupid. Me, what am I doing? I'm driving away from the zombie apocalypse, of course, because it's the future. But some things, like Lord of the Rings LCG, are worth bending space and time. Glenn, you're about to say some really insane things about the hidden cache. Specifically, you're about to say that it works as card draw, which is true, literally, but it's a little bit more nuanced than that. It's not like Darien's Ruins, which gives you two cards and then makes you put back one. That gives you an option of a total of two additional cards. The problem with Hidden Cash is that it doesn't let you do that. What it lets you do is basically take one additional card for discarding it, which is basically like saying that it lets you take it and replace it with something else, the top card of your deck. But the neutral card draw, that's not what this is. What it does make it interesting with is a couple of the weird cards from Against the Shadow. Specifically, I'm thinking about Emery, the Palantir, um, some other ones like the Prospector we just mentioned. Uh, that would be really, maybe not, but probably. Uh, so obviously fantastic for that reason. Um, so my initial thought was, and I'm glad that we both had this like powwow about it, because my initial thought was, oh, you know who this would be great with is the Trollshaw Scout and the um, 
Watcher of the Bruin in. Because I was like, oh, what they'll do is they have to discard a card every time they defend. So oh, if they stay in, yeah. they or they yeah. defend or attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not even how that reads either. Why not? This is from the deck. Oh, because you have to discard from your hand. Yeah. I see. It doesn't even work with uh, the runes of... But now it makes... Um... What card was it? Emery? Last time? Our, our dwarf. Yes. Now it makes our dwarf a lot more... The prospector? Like, yeah. Yeah, it totally makes it more interesting. No, it makes it that something like that would work way. Or even way e or even Emery. The the Emery factor is also really What's interesting. That? Remind me. So Emery was last time yeah. and she was She's dis spirit, right? Yeah. And so pet you effectively what you do is discard the top 3 cards. Yeah. If they're not if it's basically if they're uh, not neutral or spirit discard her. So effectively you pay If they're not neutral or spirit you discard her. Her. So you can choose to put her into play by discarding the top three cards. Right. If any of those top three cards are lore, leadership, or... Got it. Uh, what's lore, leadership, or uh, tactics, mm -hmm. then you have to discard her. Got it. So this one... Yeah, so that. my my So this uh, I like this card for its base ability alone. Yeah. And... I will say that I think it's really interesting because it almost feels like a Dominion card. Like it, because there are just like Dominion cards where it's like, if you discard the top card, then, you know, like get a coin. Or if you, you know. If you talk like this, if you <laughs> then you're playing Dominion. <laughs> If you trash this card, then, you know, go eat an ice cream sandwich. Like, there will all be, always be these little, like, weird kind of uh, rules that, that Dominion does. And it's kind of these passive effects that you have happen. You often set up your deck so it does that. So I, I think yeah. this is really fun. And, yeah. I, and I would also say that in a non-competitive game like this, Obviously, having these weird passive effects happen is... I just yawned. I'm not that... I don't know why. That's fine. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's it's getting late. Um, where I think in a in a competitive game, this would be a little bit harder to monitor. It'd be a little bit harder. But because right. it's a non-competitive game, because you're effectively just trying to beat the game, right. I think a, a card like this is really unique and could be really fun mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. I still like it. It's not as crazy as I thought it was when I first read it. Oh, you thought it was just... Dis you just get you two resources. Yeah. I was like, how, how, why would you not play with that? Yeah. But now it makes more sense. And it actually makes more sense for it to not be so... I mean, that would have been, you know, like one of those things that kind of tip the... Tip the scale the scale. other... Scale, yeah. Yeah, just discard it, get two resources yeah. and get... So it makes a lot more sense. Yes. But you, and, and you know, it's a little bit more... You have to play it a little bit more strategically than just every time you get it played immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I do hope they do more cards like that because I really like that idea. Yeah, I like that fun. idea of combos being not just what I'm doing for my hand or what I have in play. but Right. Yeah, so stuff like Emery and stuff like that. You're starting to yawn a lot. I know. What's going on? <gasps> it's the bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's the carbs. You had bread right before. Bread. <laughs> Makes me sleepy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, fortunately, you don't have much longer to wait before you yeah. can go to sleep. Uh, because we have reached our hero. That's probably not good for the microphone. <laughs> okay. So the last one, of course, is the amazing, fantastic, lovely. He's not that lovely. He's gruff and mean. Uh, in a good way, though. Uh, is Theoden. Uh, Theoden is 12 initial threat. He is 2 willpower, uh, 3 attack, 2 defense, 4 hit points. He's Rohan, noble, warrior. He's a sentinel. Uh, each hero with a printed tactics resource icon gets plus 1 willpower! Yay! Yay! <laughs> I couldn't be happier. Like there, I. So here's the funny thing: is six months ago, 
Six months ago, they spoiled him on Fantasy Flight's website. Yeah. And I literally texted Cheryl immediately. Like, I took a picture yeah. of it and texted it to her. And I said, ah! Like, I was so excited. Because I think he's wonderful. Like, I think he's so great. I think he is exactly what... Uh, you're crying. No, I was, yeah. <laughs> He's, ex he's exactly what uh, Tactics uh, has needed for a while. Is is Tactics is just totally beguiled with not having very much uh, willpower. And it's just very hard to put willpower into play. So not only is he three willpower, because he's two, but then he's, he's also plus one because he himself, right? Is that... Yeah, this he's is going to trick me, right? Okay. Yeah. I didn't... It, they usually trick me. They're like, except yeah. for himself. And I'm like, see, and including himself. And then I'm like, no, and I'm an idiot. And everyone's like, um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, he's... Actually, no, nobody who watches our videos ever says anything mean. They are <laughs> the know. nicest people They're on the like, planet. Oh, actually, actually, this is how I would use him. Yeah, instead, maybe you to... should consider... Yeah. Absolutely. No, yeah, uh... But as far as as far as he goes, he, I am I was so excited about him back then because I play. Yeah, it's true. Obviously, by and large, I I tend to try and play tactics whenever I get a chance to. Yeah. It doesn't always happen, but I love playing tactics just because it's fun and fighty and you kill stuff and it's yeah. so much fun. So when I saw him, I I literally even had that moment where like I text you and I'm like excited and like my, I'm like high-fiving people throughout the rest of my day. And then all of a sudden I realized like, duh, it's going to be like six months before I get to actually play with him. And I, I really genuinely thought about proxying him, like just like drawing out a little oh stick figure goodness. Theoden because he is so cool. And just so I could have him now, uh, plus his art's really cool. Yeah, I think I think he's so fantastic. I think the Sentinel ability is really cool with two with two defense. Uh, I'm a big fan, and and obviously uh, they didn't necessarily do it the last cycle, but I think he's kind of opening and welcoming the new uh, the new Isengard cycle. I think we'll probably get a lot of Rohan yeah. stuff. They've already spoiled I think five or six cards from the next one, uh, and. Of the ones that they've spoiled, most of it's been Rohan. Uh, some of it's been some really other fun stuff. But uh, so it's it's exciting to kind of be moving towards that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think? Of Theoden. Of Theoden. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm as excited about him as you are. I don't know that anybody in the universe is. <laughs> but I think he's a really a really cool, interesting hero. Yeah. And. Uh, I think he'll get a lot of play. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I imagine I'll, I imagine he'll be in some sense like the Dane, like you yeah. use Dane a lot. Right. And I'll probably use this guy a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, although after today I might use Boromir quite a bit more now too, because visionary leadership is going to be really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. So those are all the cards. I have some questions for you though. For me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any favorites? What were you, or um, well, let me even say, what was your favorite card? Favorite card. And I'm not going to choose Theoden, because obviously he's my favorite. So I'm going to have to go with my second favorite. Um, I think that from this pack, my favorite is Fourth Erlingas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's just good. It's yeah. just good. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to go with... I like visionary leadership a lot. Uh, I think visionary leadership is going to be one of those. Cause I like it. I like it even more than hardy leadership. Cause, and I, if that becomes a thing, I would actually be really cool, really cool with it. Mm. If they start different leaderships. Yeah. Like if that's kind of a thing, like, yeah. so you have hardy leadership, which gives all the dwarves plus one uh, hit point. If they started doing that with some of the different yeah. guys, like this gives them more, more willpower. Yeah, do something with more attack. Yeah, I think that would be really, I think that would be really cool. I think it's really thematic. I really enjoy that. And the other one would probably be um, uh, Hidden Cash. The next thing that I think is on the agenda is Voice of Isengard. So we'll be doing that. Looks like it'll be in January-ish. So we will see you then. I mean, we'll see you before then. Yeah. But just not for an unboxing. No, not for a Lord of the Rings unboxing. 
All right, we better say goodbye before this gets really awkward. It's already really awkward. I mean, hi. hi. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.